Hello, everybody, and welcome to Comics from the Future, our weekly show where we go over all the comics that are available to order. I'm Jason. I'm Andy. And we're with Infinity Flux Comics out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. So I think this is a pretty medium-sized week mm -hmm. for comics that are available to order. Uh, some of the weeks we've had in the past, it's been pretty long, pretty long-winded. Okay. Uh, but there are some really good avail variants, especially the new uh, Spawn DC ones. Yeah, just announced. Just announced. So stay tuned. We'll get to all that. But we're going to begin with our featured comics, starting with Invincible Iron Man is getting a new ongoing series. The one by Christopher Cantwell has come to an end. Uh, not, not too soon either. I mean, they really let that one breathe. Yeah. That was a really good series. But this new one is going to be written by uh, Jerry Dugan with art by Juan Frigeri. And this is supposed to be like a really dark Iron Man series. <laughs> the solicitation says that Tony has lost everything. He's lost his fortune. He's lost his friends. Uh, he's lost his dog. I'm making that part. But uh, anyway, I don't know why, but he's at a very, very low point. And then it says things get worse. Assassins come after him. It's like he thinks it's that bad, and then assassins start coming after him. What will he do? Kind of wonder, why doesn't he just contact all his Avenger friends? Yeah, they he's surely, made them mad. I, he probably has, but doesn't he, I mean, has he not gained any, like, goodwill in all this time? Yeah, you know, Jerry Dugan is an excellent writer. I'm really excited to see what he does with mm -hmm. Iron Man, and he is good at taking things very, very dark, mm -hmm. but making them interesting. Yeah. So, um, this is our main cover. We got, of course, several covers. This is the Chichetto variant. Here is the Leighton variant. Uh, Andy was just talking to me about yeah. this one. Yeah, this is a connecting variant. I guess for the, I don't know how many issues this is going to connect with, but Bob Leighton drawing all of the Iron Man suits, I mean, this thing could go on pretty indefinitely, depending on uh, how deep he wants to dive in. But I think this is one to jump on early. Because I think this set will end up being really, really cool. Yeah, this is why we do the show. Because if you place your orders for these comics by the end of the weekend, you're guaranteed to get them. After that, stuff like this comes out, it hits the news, and then shops don't have enough and mm -hmm. people can't get them. So especially with the connecting variant set, because if you miss even one, yeah, yeah. it's kind of a bummer. Here is the Shalvi Extreme Marvel variant. It's a pretty extreme suit he has. Yeah, de definitely. And it almost has a bit of humor to the drawing. Yeah. Like I get a little a little Scotty Young vibe in a way. Here is the Tau Ironheart variant. And lastly, we have the Vicheo variant for the new Invincible Iron Man number one. Here's your chance to place your pre-orders. Next up, we have Justice Society of America number one. So I really like that DC is going all in with some of the characters that for a while haven't really got the uh, the spotlight. It's been, you know, basically since the New 52 back in 2011 where people have been saying, like, where's the Justice Society? Yeah. This is the kind of first real number one that they've had since then. And that comes right on the heels of the New Golden Age, which comes out this Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on your store, kicking off a whole... Um, corner of the DC universe that has been ex explored in a while. I actually read the new Golden Age already. So uh, in the solicitation for this, I kind of know what they're talking about. But it does say that a long lost hero kind of falls out of nowhere with a warning that there is someone uh, going through the timeline. As we know with some of the previous stuff, they've been using the Time Masters a lot, but there's a time traveler who is going to different times and wreaking havoc, and the person who's warning him is already too late. So it sounds really fun. I I already kind of know what uh, what this villain is doing. You find out in the New Golden Age, and it's a very uh, dastardly plot that uh, has pretty far-reaching effects, but it says that a new team must form to stop him. So this is almost a new Justice Society team. Uh, that I'm very excited about. You'll even see a hint of that in one of the variants, that this is not just going back and telling old stories. It's almost like bringing the band back together to do another mission. So this is written by Jeff Johns, and the art is by uh, Mikkel Janin. 
Uh, so very cool. I think there's some preview pages of this out there. Check it out. But I am very excited about all of this coming out. This is our A cover. You can see with the B cover, we've got Alan Scott, the original Green Lantern, but this time he's sporting a beard. That's so true. it's kind of a cool idea where these Justice Society characters are kind of reforming the team to take on this threat. And I like they're portraying them a little bit older. And then we have a uh, 90s yeah, foil variant. It doesn't get more 90s than the foil ones where it's like, oh, this is cool. Oh, but wait, what's on it? And you got to <laughs> yeah. really look and, and feel. I, I feel like if you know Braille, you have an advantage <laughs> to collecting these covers. Yeah, and this one is by Joe Canones. Okay, so next up we have an indie book. It is Know Your Station number one. This is going to be a five-issue series released by Boom. This is by uh, Sarah Gailey, who lately wrote Eat the Rich, mm -hmm. that popular series, with art by Leanna Kangas, who did the art of uh, True Cult. So here's the premise for this. Basically, the rich have abandoned the Earth, and uh, they've gone to, like, some space sanctuary. You know, it's like they're so rich, they can just be like, bye, Earth, you're having all these climate problems. Well, us 1%, we're out of here. Mm -hmm. Um, well, that doesn't end their troubles. There are a series of murders amongst them. And it seems like there's a murderer. And so this becomes sort of an investigation of one of the people who's with them, but she's sort of like a, like a servant or whatever. She's not one of the rich. She has to start investigating who would be killing them. You know, gee, I don't know. They just <laughs> you know, did some terrible stuff and left the whole earth. So that is the premise for Know Your Station, I guess, is in Space Station. Yeah. So this is the regular cover. Here is the Harry variant. Pretty interesting. This would have been really good for Halloween. Like yeah. This, with the orange of, of the top logo. Here is the, they call this just one the FOC reveal variant. So I'm not sure who the artist is on this one, actually. I think it's Tula Lote. Lote, I, yeah. I can see that. Then here is the Woodall variant for Know Your Station, issue number one. And next up, we have our first of a few tie-ins with the new Dark Web series. Uh, but I'm excited about this one. This is Mary Jane and Black Cat, written by Jed McKay, who has been your uh, Black Cat writer. Yeah. And in this, um, so I found out more about Dark Web from reading about the tie-in books. So in this one, it says the kind of uh, portals to limbo have opened, which, you know, limbo was controlled by magic of the X-Men and is now controlled by uh, the Goblin Queen, uh, Rachel Summers, I believe. Isn't that Rachel Summers? Madeline Pryor. Madeline Pryor. Pryor. Madeline Pryor. Yeah. Um, I knew it was one of the, uh, the circling the Summers the family. Old, the, the old Jean Grey clone. Yeah. Uh, but in this... Something uh, kind of catapults Mary Jane and Black Cat together and then sends them both into limbo where they must uh, survive, fight all the demons there. Also, it seems like both of them have a secret and something happened to Mary Jane when she got thrown through there. And so she's holding on to a dark secret, but so does Black Cat. So sounds really fun. I'm very excited about this so, one. One thing I will note about the variants that's not pictured here, it's not ready yet. There is going to be an Adam Hughes variant. I'm excited to see. It's the Adam Hughes demonized variant. So they just tease you with that idea, but I haven't revealed it see, yet. That, so that's a shame. So when they don't have these variants ready, you know, we don't really have them to mm -hmm. show. But our orders are still due yeah. by, depending on when your shop has orders due ours are due sunday night mm -hmm. so to get that hughes variant you got to tell your shop that you want it yeah and just sight unseen but i mean consider the subject matter and the artist yes safe bet there are still some other cool variants so we've got a peach momoko variant i like how it's mary jane and a black cat, a black cat. it's like and... they, they she misread the it's like Draw up Mary Jane and Black Cat, and, and it was like someone accidentally hit A, and it's like, oh, that changes there's a everything. There's spider on her, too. Oh, wow. So she's sort of surrounded by yeah. these, these things. The cat's going to get that spider. And then we have the uh, David Nakayama variant. Okay, so next up is a one-shot in honor of Nubia's 50th anniversary. She's been around for 50 years. It is Nubia and the Justice League special, and... There's not a whole lot on this other than that Nubia joins the Justice League. That's the big headline. Nubia joins the Justice League. 
but what I couldn't find out for the life of me, is it just for this one shot or is she staying? Yeah. I, I could not figure this out. I, I looked into it. I'm not sure. I think it's just for this issue because this also has multiple writers and multiple artists. It's 48 pages. So I think it's a series of stories about Nubia teaming up with the Justice League mm, or Justice yeah. League members. That's what I think. So, you know, I, I did my best to try to relay what exactly this is. It's going to be five ninety nine, and again, it's 48 pages in honor of Nubia's 50th anniversary. So here is our main cover. Here is the Mateus variant. And then we have the Sway variant. Which it looks like it mirrors the Wonder Woman variant that just came out. There was a Sway Wonder Woman variant. It's kind of similar poses, poses, but mirrored. And it looks like they're swaying their hips a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here is a new book that sounds really cool. This is Dead Seas. Uh, this is written by uh, Kevin Scott, who I've had the pleasure of working with on Star Wars. Uh, great writer. And this the art is by Nick Brokenshire, who also has worked on uh, the Star Wars book. So they've formed a working relationship there. And are doing this book. And the more I read about this premise, the more like funny and interesting it got. So it begins by saying uh, ghosts are real and their ectoplasm is highly valuable. It can cure diseases. Uh, it's just a, but it's going to be hard to get. You got to get it from ghosts. Not a pleasant experience. So there is a, uh, I think this, this is a character on the cover named Gus. And he is a prisoner looking to cut down some of his time in jail. And to do that, he is going to brave the seas of a prison that's out in the middle of the ocean that is infested with the worst ghost imaginable as he tries to kind of scrape the ectoplasm off of it. Like, I guess, kind of like barnacles or something. Collect it uh, to help him, you know finally get released from this but sounds like it's going to be a challenge uh and it's described as the poseidon adventure meets uh the haunting of hill house which just sounds really fun the mixture of ghosts and the ocean is always a really cool thing it's very mysterious so this is our a cover for that one we have our anadito variant creepy also very creepy and we have our uh, Jones variant. All right, so Monica Rambeau is getting her own mini mini series called Monica Rambeau Photon. That's the name that she is going by currently. So this is a five issue mini series where she is hired to do a. It just says a very specially special delivery in space. So does, I don't know what that is, but a very special delivery somewhere. However, um, she is plagued by family drama. Oh, the one thing that can get us all. Doesn't matter if you're in space, doesn't matter if you have superpowers, family drama can bring you down. So I totally get that. Anyhow, so five issue miniseries. This is being written by Eve L. Ewing with art by Luca Marasca. And so this is our main cover. Here is the Darbo variant. I like the, the cosmic power mm -hmm. oozing off of her. Here is the Momoko variant and the Stelfreeze variant. This is cool also because we know Photon's going to be a big character in the Marvels, the right. movie. Uh, I just like that they do this and they kind of give you, you know, some stuff. If you're not familiar with the character, a series or a mini series to go to that you can you can read and get caught up on the character. Okay, next up, we've got a few more Dark Web tie-ins, starting off with, you know, this is not Dark Web Spider-Man, even though it looks like it with that cover. This is Dark Web X-Men, number one. Uh, this is going to be a three-part tie-in to the Dark Web event. And in this, all these solicits basically sound the same, but in this one, uh, demons from Limbo are running the streets of New York. And it's going to be up to uh, Cyclops and the X-Men to take them down. But Cyclops, of course, has a, uh, a history with the new ruler of Limbo that he's going to have to kind of, uh, it says, confront a dark past. So he's had some, uh, the way he left her originally when June Grey came back wasn't the best. And I think they're going to kind of address some of that. 
So this is our A cover for that. We have our Terry Dodson variant. And we have our uh, LaRocca connecting variant. And along with those, we have Dark Web Miss Marvel. This is an interesting tie-in. You know, I you have Spider-Man, you have X-Men. Those are like the two uh, series characters that this is based off of. But you're throwing Miss Marvel in there. And one of the reasons is because she is a co-worker now of Spider-Man at Norman Osborn's lab. That's right, because, yeah, she's an inhuman. Yeah. But it's, it's that, it's the co-worker It's thing. the co-worker thing that kind of brings her into this. And with her, it's the same thing. She finds herself in limbo, and she's going to have to battle her way out. Uh, this one is only a two-part miniseries, so a pretty digestible uh, uh, size for a miniseries. I think it sounds a lot of fun. So a bunch of tie-ins with that. We've also got the variant. This is the uh, Vincentini variant. Okay, so next is Plush number one. This is a new six-issue miniseries from Doug Wagner and Daniel Hilliard, the team that brought us vinyl and that brought us plastic. Their their original books all on serial killers. These two just can't uh, write enough serial killers. It's now stuff. shoehorned into you've got to have like a material <laughs> and so what is plush about it is about serial killing cannibalistic furries if you don't know what furries are be careful when you look them up uh you can go to the wrong <laughs> sites anyhow uh this follows a character his name is devin and it's his first time at a furry convention and he comes upon a bunch of furries who are cannibalizing someone now, where does this lead? I don't know. You'll have to just read. These are always sort of sick-humored books. Yeah. That's just sort of the work that they do. So this is our main cover. Then we have the Fleeks variant. We have the Corona and Stern variant. And lastly, we have the Lotte variant. <laughs> that that furry's been through the ring. I can't tell if that's a that's a stripe or a tire <laughs> yeah. running over. Okay, so that was our featured number ones, but now we're going to go through some of the other number ones you might be interested in. Starting with Dark Crisis War Zone number one, but this is a one shot. They like to do these uh, tie ins that kind of show you what else is going on or where are some of the other characters during these events. Uh, so this one for Dark Crisis, you've got a variety of writers and artists, and we're going to be checking out now that the Justice League have been taken out of the picture, who is stepping up to uh, fight th this dark army. Um, so we're going to see stories of Red Canary, which, you know, I like that they're really pushing her now as being a new thing. Yeah, brand new, but... Yeah, yeah, we get to really see her... Uh, in action with this so sort of red canary the story of the flash family which i always love seeing they all have power is it, is it even wally west flash family? i think that's what it is because yeah. the writer of that one is uh the they've all got flash. powers now even even linda has yeah. her powers so we're gonna see that you can see well, there we have uh, joe mullen the green lantern so it's kind of cool to check out all of the uh the characters who maybe don't get the main spotlight, how are they going to take on this crisis? So this is our A cover for that. And this is our Mario Fox Fuchio variant. Okay, so DC is releasing a series of annuals starting with, this doesn't have the trade dress, but this is the annual for Detective Comics 2022. It almost looks like a uh, cover for... Um, Bloodborne or something like that. The kind of like the eyes, and you've got this like Victorian. I, I can see super that. cool. I, I also see a little bit of Bram Stoker's Dracula. Yeah, and, you know he wouldn't look like a wolf. Mm -hmm. but anyhow, um, so this is interesting. This is a tale from the 1700s Gotham, where a werewolf named Gale, who has you know been around for a while, like even older than Gotham, is returning to the lands near Arkham to try to dig something up. Doesn't say what, but there's something that it's trying to dig up. Meanwhile, there is a dark knight around who is misplaced in time. They're going to find some way to shoe shoehorn Batman into any story. It's a 1700s, that's fine. It's a time thing there. 
But, you know, werewolves and, and time displaced Batmans, you got me there. I love that you say it's, a werewolf goes back to dig something up. It's just an old, like, pig ear. Bone. <laughs> it's bone. It's, yeah. it's just a chew toy he had. So, of course, this is by uh, our Detective Comics team, Ram V and Christopher Mitten. But there's two other um, DC annuals also. There's the Nightwing 2022 annual, which, of course, is by um, Tom Taylor and Edward uh, Pensica. And in this one, we're going to get the origin of Heartless. Why does he not have a heart? Why does he only collect certain people's hearts? And what exactly is he doing with them? This is a character I've wanted to know more about ever since they introduced. And they just kind of got sidelined yeah. by a lot of other things they had to deal with that in DC event books. So they're finally getting around to Heartless's Day in the Sun. Also, uh, this is going to contain Bitewing Year One. Oh, man. So, That's yeah, Bite, Bitewing's initial... Sort of first year. So this is a regular cover. Here is the Redondo cover. And then lastly, Batgirls is having an annual too. It's Batgirls 2022 annual by the regular team Becky Cloonan and Robbie Rodriguez. And in this, the Batgirls, it literally says they're having a Freaky Friday. And so, yes, the plot is that they wake up and their bodies are switched. Classic. So, you know, why not? Let's see how that turns out. So it's fun on the cover, too, because they're wearing each other's costumes. It's just neat to see them. Yeah. You know, what they would look like in those suits. So that's what's going on in the Batgirls 2022 annual. Next up, we have something I've really been looking forward to. This is the Superman Hallel Returns special. So what this is going to do is, even though he's been back for a couple of weeks in the comics or whatever... Um, this is going to show all the different moments of him reconnecting with people on Earth. So we're going to see Kal-El uh, reunite with Batman, Jimmy Olsen, the Justice League, and even Lex Luthor. Uh, you know, he's just making his house calls, going by, knocking on their windows, being like, I'm back in case you need anything. What have you been up to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But also, the big thing in this is it's a conversation I've had with multiple customers here is this is going to show the moment that Pariah uh, took Superman away to put him in his Dark Crisis world. Because we were like, it was on, you know, War Worlds going on the same time as Dark Crisis. Like, when does this add up? This is going to kind of have that, like, bridge between the two series to see what was Superman doing, how long he'd been back before he got taken away again. So I think that's super cool. Uh, no pun intended. This is our A cover for that by Dan Mora. And we have our B cover by Travis Moore. And also, yep. our first of the Fancy Spawn crossover Hot covers. To the premises. Yeah, this probably hasn't been printed yet, but it's, it's on the way there. Uh, the files are, the little envelope is going from one little thing to the next. Uh, and this is by Dan Mora. I think these are going to be so cool. So definitely don't miss out on these Spawn covers. We've got a few more coming up. Okay, so there's another indie series coming out called The Firstborns. Uh, it was hard for me to tell what exactly this is fully about. The solicitation basically says that a kid wakes up from a nightmare where one of his classmates has burst into flames because he comes into contact with this alien object. You know, that, that sounds like a good premise or a good opening, but I don't know where it's going to go. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I guess this has to do with aliens. But, I mean, you know, it says he wakes from a nightmare. So did it happen? Mm -hmm. Didn't it happen? How does the name Firstborns tie into it? I, I really am not sure. This is all the digging I could do on it. And that's what I got out of it. So um, here's, there are three covers all done by the same interior artist, uh, Luca Vasello. So here is the B cover. And lastly, we have the C cover to The Firstborns. Surely a horror book from the yeah, looks of it. Yeah, from the font to the creepy covers. Yeah. And this sounds really interesting. So this is called Grim Space. But if you notice, Grim is spelled with two M's because this is a sci-fi take on Grim fairy tales, which I don't know if it's been done before, but when I read that, I was like, that's a genius idea. Because this first story is their take on Jack and the Beanstalk. So instead of Jack taking a cow to go sell, and then he doesn't get the money, he gets beans, uh, we have our character Jack, who uh, takes a broken robot to trade, but instead of uh, getting the money, he's given a uh, Nava computer that's going to take him 
where it should be a bunch of riches, but uh, they uh, encounter giants there. So it's a cool take on Jack of the Beanstalk, and I'm interested to see what other uh, tales they take on with the sci-fi. And check out this very or this cover because I I don't know if I've ever seen connecting variants that instead of side by side, these are top and bottom. I see that. So. You have the top of the beast in the first one, and then you have its legs, and I'm guessing Jack running away from it on the bottom. I, yeah, I can't recall anyone doing that before either. It's pretty interesting. All right, so next up, Oni is doing another Rick and Morty miniseries, Rick and Morty versus Cthulhu. So in this, Rick and Morty, they're going to have to go up against a uh, Lovecraftian hellscape. So this is written by Jim Zub. And it's going to be a four-issue series. Here is the variant by Xander Cannon. Yeah, and that's interesting because, you know, a lot of, you know, even like the original opening of Rick and Morty and stuff had a very Lovecraftian monster. I feel like that's been sprinkled through the series, but now they're actually coming face-to-face -face with it. And we have a new High Republic series from Dark Horse. Uh, but it is still called Star Wars High Republic Adventures, much like the IDW series. But this time, um, instead of being ongoing, this is going to, at least this one to begin with, is an eight-part uh, mini-series, maxi-series, whatever you want to call it, eight issues. Um, and it sounds really interesting. So there is a new uh, Padawan Jedi that has just joined the, the Order, but something uh, causes them to run into some space pirates, and the space pirates... The captain is Maz Kanata. So she's very old. Even when we see her in Force Awakens, she goes all the way back to the High Republic days. We're actually going to see her be a pirate. We know she has kind of like a den of pirates that she runs later on, but this is her in her prime doing her pirating. So I think this sounds like the start to a great new mini series for Star Wars High Republic. Definitely let your store know if you want to be on this one. All right, so now we're going to get to cool covers and other comics. That's going to be variant covers we think are noteworthy or just issue number twos and ons of certain books that you may need a reminder that maybe you want to sign up for the series. Starting with Batman issue 130. This is going to be the finale to the first arc by the new Batman team, Zdarsky and Jimenez. So this will be the end of the failsafe arc. I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes. This has been a very thrilling arc where Batman really has very much met his match mm -hmm. in something that, of course, only he could create to make it where he can meet his match. Uh -huh. Interesting. He gets himself into the craziest situation. So this is the regular cover by Jimenez. Here is the Delato variant. Here is the Sejic variant. In front of, of course, the famous T-Rex he mm -hmm. keeps in the Batcave. And then we also have the braga holiday variant uh, just just in time for christmas it's very it's fun coming up but i do want to say so here's the here's the other deal they're doing the spawn crossover variants there's one being done by clay man for this book but they didn't have the cover done in time so all of us stores have to have our orders in by sunday night yet there is no cover on that yeah so if you want to be guaranteed that you're going to get it please ask your store tell them you want that Batman Spawn variant order, that way you can get it guaranteed. It's funny because we've got the Batman Spawn book coming out. We could have just shifted one of those variants over if it wasn't in time. Yeah. But... <laughs> okay, and then we have Batman uh, and the Joker, the Deadly Duo, number two. Number one just came out this week. Uh, very cool if you're a fan of Mark Silvestri's art. Uh, the storyline, very interesting. Uh, and in it, uh, well, some pieces, uh, Commissioner Gordon is missing, and pieces of him are being shipped to uh, the GCPD. Uh, issue one started with his mustache. Uh, so it says more pieces of him start to show up, so they have to solve the case of who took Harley and what's going on in Gotham with these scary Joker creatures walking the streets. Um, still just a mini series, a uh, uh, seven issue mini series. But make sure to tell your story you want to get on it. Uh, there are some great variants for this one as well. So it looks like all of these are going to be having the uh, Batman and Joker variants that are the same artist. So the first one had the Capullo Batman and Joker. This time we have the Kelly Jones Batman and then the Joker. And then we have another Jim Lee 
variant as well, and this one just dropped like a few minutes before the show. Oh, and then there's the Sejic for this one as well. Yep. All right, so this is the Smallwood variant for Gotham City Year One, number three, the series by Tom King, all about Slam Bradley, told in the uh, past of Gotham. So again, this is the Smallwood variant for Gotham City Year One number three. And then oh, probably Lord. one of the scariest variants I've ever seen. That's this really is uh, Joker the Man Who Stopped Laughing number three. This is the Bermejo variant. In this one, uh, Joker is dying. He has uh, some kind of disease or something that is slowly killing him. But that doesn't stop Jason Todd from finally deciding, I'm just going to go kill the Joker. So that is what's going on in this one. We've got this Bermejo variant. So scary. Um, this is the Massafara variant. I always have to sneeze. And then we have the Sarmento variant. They're very leaning into Christmas with this one, which I really like. You have to really look into that one to see the reflection. Yeah. But I think this is going to be a hot one. This is the Tony Daniel uh spawn and joker crossover variant okay so this is the variant to monkey prince number nine it's the inhuk lee variant in this issue the monkey prince and his family go to metropolis so it you know this might, might actually happen here who knows so of course uh again this is inhuk lee variant for monkey prince number nine this is by Gene Yang and Bernard Chang are the people who do the main series. This cover, of course, is in Hyokali, though. Then we have this great variant for um, New Champion of Shazam, number four of four. This is the Rose Besh cover for the final issue of the series. Just this one. So much energy. Okay, so this is the regular cover for Poison Ivy number seven. So on it, it says Ivy sells out. And her, her shirt says, shill, baby, shill. So in this, the solicitation says that Ivy finally decides that fracking is okay. That she has changed her mind about a lot of things and changed her life and is going to be living and thinking differently. I find that hard to believe. Yeah. I, I think this is, uh, she is grifting some people. Uh, we will see. So here is the regular cover to Poison Ivy number seven. Here is the Middleton variant for all you out there who collect all the Middleton stuff. Don't miss out on this one. Here is the Lee Irix Lee variant. And lastly, we have a Nakayama variant for Spawn crossing over with the DC Universe. Yeah, this is uh, one I did not expect to happen. Uh, Poison Ivy teaming up with Spawn, but it's cool. He's got chains and she's got her vines. Yep. Okay, next up, we just have this really cool cover for Sword of Azrael, number five of six. This is by Derek Chu. I just thought this one was really cool looking. Okay, so um, this is the LaRocca connecting variant to Amazing Spider-Man number 15. And in this, Spider-Man's going to go up against Venom. Uh, now, that's not that strange. They fought a lot of times, just not really lately. But why is Venom helping Chasm? That's the, that's the question. So, again, this is the LaRocca connecting variant. And here is the McGinnis variant. Got to get the Spider-Man fighting Venom covers that's really cool. out there. Yeah. So, of course, this is written by Zeb Wells with art by Ed McGinnis. Then we have Deadpool number two. This just came out. Number one just came out. Uh, great homage cover on this one as well. But uh, Deadpool has 24 hours to kill Doc Ock uh, for this, like, assassin group. Uh, but also it talks about, hey, what's that thing hanging out of Deadpool's chest? If you read the last one, you know that he's been infected with something. Uh, a very familiar, let's say, symbiote. And I'm looking forward to finding out what happens with that. So this is our A cover. We have our Momoko variant. And then we have our Todd Knock Full Pillar variant. Here's the main cover for Gold Goblin number two. Norman Osborn's only been a hero for a very short time, but he's already having to go up against what they claim is a terrifying enemy. Ooh. Yep, not one of those enemies that soothe. One of the ones yeah. that really scare you. So this is the regular cover. Here is the Dowling variant, and here is the Riley Windowshades variant. 
This uh, book is written by Christopher Cantwell with interior art by Lan Medina. And then we have our second issue of Planet Hulk World Breaker. This one, of course, is uh, written by Greg Koch, and it's going back to uh, Sakaar, uh, but this time, like, thousands of years in the future, and where Hulk being on there is just a myth, but it says, with the new problems they have here, which Hulk, which gamma-powered person will rise up to help? So this is our A cover. And then we have our really nice Gary Frank variant. Here is the Coella variant to Sabretooth and the Exiles number two. This is written by Victor Lavelle with interior art by Leonard Kirk. And in this issue, there is mutiny. How long will Sabretooth be able to stay the team leader? Hmm. So that's what's going on. This is a Coella variant. And then we have the Sandoval variant for Sabretooth and the Exiles number two. And then we have Spider-Man, uh, The Lost Hunt, number two. This is a five-issue miniseries. And just want to remind you, issue one is not out of this out for this yet. And I'm really excited to read this because it's also kind of going back to that uh, Craven's Last Hunt days of Spider-Man. But, you know, it's not out yet. So don't forget, if it looks like something you're even mildly interested in, just go ahead and ask your store for it so they don't under-order this book. This is our A cover, and then we have our B cover. This is the uh, Fetchner Beyond Spider-Man variant. The Web of Spider-Man homage, number yeah. one homage on that. Okay, so this is the Corey Smith Demonized variant for Wakanda number three. This series is following different Wakandan people, with this one is going to go over Killmonger. So Killmonger fans, if you want to issue all about him, that's what this is going to be about. And uh, again, this is a Corey Smith demonized variant for Wakanda number three. And this is really cool. So this is Star Wars Mandalorian number six. Uh, but this is a Patrick Gleason cover. Super cool to see Pat Gleason do uh, some Star Wars work. I think he's done maybe a Vader cover in the past and stuff, but this one's really nice. And also, I always like to tell you, even though this is based off of each issue is based off an episode of The Mandalorian, uh, that does mean that there's some first appearances in these. The key one in this would be Mayfeld, uh, Bill Burr's character that shows up later in season two. Uh, this will be his first appearance in this issue. Okay, so this is Lovesick number two. This is the regular cover by Vecchio. And uh, in this, it says that the live Red Room Day is coming, but Domino, our main character, she is worried if uh, she's going to live up to her follower six expectations. So uh, we reviewed issue number one, our last show, and we actually got a message from the creator. Oh, nice. Yeah, who, who assured us that actually he had this written and such long before Red Room. You know, Red Room is a thing, and it's something he was already writing about. Yeah. And they just came out with theirs afterwards. So, anyhow, just wanted to clarify that, that, that this was, uh, you know, by his words, beforehand. Mm. So, this is the main cover. We also have this B cover, the C cover, and lastly, this is the D cover. This is the Danny variant for Lovesick number two. Okay, next we have Briar number two. Feels like it's taken a while for Briar number two to come yeah, out. I agree. Uh, number one was a big hit around here. A lot of fans of this. Of course, this is the uh, retake on Sleeping Beauty, where uh, she actually wasn't woken up by the prince. And when she did finally wake up, her kingdom was in ruin. Uh, very dark, very scary. So if you like number one, you didn't miss number two. It's just a little bit later. So sign up for this one. And then we have a variant by, this is the Paquette variant. We have the Franny variant. And then we have two FOC reveal variants by Tulalote. This is the first one and the second one. This is the Murakami variant to Damn Them All number two, which is uh, written, written by Simon Spurrier with interior art by Charlie Adler. And in this issue, the, the madness that's been going on begins to infect the population of Britain. So again, this is the Murakami variant. And then here is 
the other variant that they just call the FOC reveal variant. All right, so now we're going to get to the last part of our show, other printings and graphic novels. Starting with this one, I think this is great. They're doing this. Brave and the Bold, issue 28, the first appearance of the Justice League. Uh, you see them fighting Starro on there. Great issue, and I love that they're really doing a good job with these facsimile reprint editions, covering a lot of the key issues in DC's history. I know a lot of people will be picking this one up. Okay, uh, Behold Behemoth came out the other week, and if you missed that number one, it is going back to a second printing. So this is the second printing for Behold Behemoth number one. And then we have Crypt of Shadows number one, it's just a one-shot, second printing. I don't know if we've seen a, I guess kind of a holiday tie-in book be as popular as this one. We sold, we ordered like a good number of this and completely sold out of it and all its variants. People, you can tell they are just really jazzed about this uh, corner of the Marvel Universe, the kind of darker corner with with your Werewolf by Nights and Moon Knight and all of that. So if you've missed that first one or you want to get all of them, this is the second printing of Crypt of Shadows. All right, another great book that is about the Dark Corners of the Marvel Universe. Moon Knight Annual is going back to second print. I am not surprised. We ordered a lot of these. We sold a ton of these, too. Yeah. Because in it, Moon Knight goes up against Werewolf by Night. I gave it a review, I think, last week. Positive review. And I think a lot of people, uh, upon hearing what it was really about and that they really do fight, yeah. they got this book. So this is the second print, if you missed that first print. This is, of course, by Jed McKay, one of my favorite writers in Marvel right now, with art by Federico Sabatini. And then we have a facsimile edition of Ultimate Comics Spider-Man number one. So this is the first issue of Miles's, Miles's ongoing uh, title back uh, after Ultimate Fallout. So uh, this is this is when I start feeling old is when there's facsimiles of books that I bought off the shelf. Um, but if you've never read that one, I think this is a super cool one to pick up. Uh, little did we know at the time how big of a character Miles would end up being. All right, so that's our show for this week. So if you're watching us on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. We're trying to get to 2K subscribers. We're getting closer and closer all the time. So we would appreciate that. And uh, if you order with us, please have your orders in by the end of Sunday night. So hopefully we have done our job and we've told you all about the different comics that are open to order and shown you those variants that you want. So here's a chance to, to write it all down, contact your store. So we will be back on Monday, Monday. with our weekly comic review show. And uh, if, you, if you miss Megan like we do, she's out running register still. Uh, she will be on tonight doing whatnot sales at eight o'clock on our whatnot channel. So have a great rest of your day and go go read some comics or well, read flip some through comics. the collection or do what I do organize. <laughs> organize. You organize more than you read. Yeah. So long. <laughs>